Oppression has pillars, five of them to be specific. When they are present, the equation of subjugation becomes complete. These pillars are fixed. They are found in every civilization that chooses to oppress its community, regardless of its race, its religion, or even the era. What changes are the faces, as well as the instruments employed. But as for the underlying principles, they are fundamentally the same. Now, in the eyes of Muslims, the symbol, the paragon, the idea of oppression has become embodied in the person of the Pharaoh of Egypt, whose story with the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, is perhaps the most repeated story in the Quran, which on its own is a subtle indication that the story of oppression will continue to repeat itself all throughout the course of history. And that the pillars of oppression in each one of those eras is identical. So what are these pillars? The first of them, it's the arrogant authority. The first pillar is in reference to an authority that considers itself immune to any form of accountability where nothing should or can stand in its way. An authority that views criticism as rebellion or treason a threat that should be eradicated. Now, if we were to rewind back to the story of Prophet Musa, Moses and the Pharaoh, you find that this pillar of oppression is represented by the figure of the Pharaoh himself, whose reign was unchallenged, whose opinions were above the law, and who considered advisors as uh, opposition, deserving of jail or torture or even execution. This is your first pillar of oppression. The, the tyrannical regime, the tyrannical authority. The second pillar of oppression is the hypocritical minister. This second pillar of oppression culminates in a minister or ministers who cozy up to the authority, that reassure it, that it is justified in its measures, that take every opportunity to give a round of applause for its statements, and fulfilling its every instruction without a second thought. Now, if we were to rewind back to the story of Prophet Musa, this second pillar of oppression is represented by the figure of Haman, who was the Pharaoh's minister, of course. The third pillar of oppression are the financers. Every suppressive regime requires wealthy members of society who have a, a personal interest in the existence of such a regime. They vehemently oppose any efforts for reformation because it threatens their fortunes, their statuses, their positions. So they extend a very generous hand in ensuring that the authority remains unchallenged and that any voices of reason are quashed. Now, if we were to rewind back to the story of Prophet Musa, this third pillar of oppression is represented by the figure of Qarun, who was, of course, the wealthiest of human beings to exist, and he was a financial supporter of the cause of the Pharaoh. The fourth pillar of oppression is the religious authority. That's right. This fourth pillar is in reference to religious clergy men who paint the injustices of the authority with a gloss of religion, who not only justify their decrees, even if they are blatantly contradictory to their religious verdicts in the past, but they do it under the guise of maslaha, public interest, or they justify it under the guise of darura, necessity, and perhaps will even praise the decisions of the authority as being the essence of wisdom and even divinely inspired. They are scholars who sell their homes in the hereafter for a very petty worldly return. And if we were to rewind back to the story of Prophet Musa, we find that this fourth pillar of oppression is represented by the magicians of the Pharaoh. That is, of course, prior to them embracing Islam. And then you have the fifth and final pillar of oppression, and that is the media. No dictatorship can exist without it. It's a body that seeks to sway public opinion for the benefit of the establishment, only, of course, covering the stories that glorify it and turning a blind eye from those stories that may detract from it. And if we were to rewind back to the story of Prophet Musa, this 
fifth pillar of oppression is represented by the gatherers. Who were the gatherers? They were those who rushed out into the street to congregate the masses of Egypt to witness the duel between Prophet Musa and the magicians. And what did they say in their media campaign? They said, Hal antum Will you all not gather? So that we may follow the magicians if they are victorious. Notice the wording so that we may follow the magicians if they are victorious. What if they are not victorious? Will you then follow Prophet Musa if he is victorious over the magicians? Well, guess what? They didn't even consider mentioning this to the people as a viable option because they wish to sway the public opinion and to only give them one particular version of events and how things could unfold to serve the authority. So these are the pillars of oppression, which if any one of them is missing, then the building of oppression cannot stand. And a quick and cursory glance at the political scene of today, particularly in much of the Muslim world, displays, subhanAllah, how similar yesterday was to today.